Tuesday, June 16th, 1031, uh, Senate Natural Resources and Energy Committee is convening. Um, we uh, have today uh, one piece of business to conduct, and that is we've been working on an amendment to Senate Bill 237. Uh, there's a, the current draft amendment is 5.1. It's Tuesday, June 16th, 1031. Oh, here we go. We're having a round. It's, it's stopped now. Okay. And I'm just waiting for council to join us. Um, because yeah, yeah, she doesn't, I don't think she has a phone number. Uh, I've, I've emailed her. Uh, at any rate, so the, uh, I want to check in with her uh, because the bill has gone through uh, editing overnight. Uh, oh, right. Um, us, here she comes. Here she comes. Um, to give us a clean copy. Oh, I didn't get that yet. And here's counsel. So good morning, Ms. Tchaikovsky. Um, so we are just getting started. So uh, besides uh, having a, a clean and final copy for us to vote. Um, the other question is, uh, because we, we're in a slightly unusual position, we've never had possession of this bill. We've always been working to assemble an amendment to it. Uh, it will be offered by individual senators. When we got started, I made the drafting request, so my name is on it. But um, my hope is that we actually, by the time we go to the floor, we have many more sponsors and that they include members of this committee, the Economic Development Committee, and maybe senators beyond that. Um, so one order of business is to ask uh, if uh, either Senators Campion or McDonald would like to be added to the bill as, uh, added to the amendment as sponsors. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, Ms. Schakowsky, did you see that? those hand raised. So if we could add Senators McDonald and Campion, that would be good. Um, and then in terms of where we are uh, procedurally, we got a draft 5-1 yesterday, which circulated. Um, I know it went through editorial and I don't know if you have uh, any updates to us based on editorial review or other that uh, if we need to make any final adjustments before we have a copy to vote. I just posted the draft 6.1 on the website. She just sent it to me. Okay, great. So uh, Senator Campion. I have a, a procedural question, Mr. Chair. So you're going to ask for other senators to jump on this amendment after it's voted by the committee. And I just want to make sure that that's, that's, that can be done. That's all. Sure. So all, yeah, it, it's again, it is a slightly unusual path we're taking. The bill, all we're doing is responding to a proposal of amendment. Right. Committee. Um, the proposal's not finalized in terms of who's offering it yet. Okay. Two things are independent, really. So even though we're voting today, you can continue to uh, add names to the amendment. That is my understanding. Great. Thank you. Um, because we're not making any material change. It's just who signed on as a sponsor. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, so, uh, Ms. Tchaikovsky, uh, probably uh, 6-1 includes, uh, does 6-1 include changes compared to 5-1? Okay, so uh, can you show us any change that came up on the final review overnight, please? Sure. Um... I just made you co-host. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yes, good morning. Last night, uh, there was a draft posted, draft 5.1. Um, it was posted before I sent it to the editors. Uh, I sent it to the editors. I received it back this morning and there were a few small changes that needed to be made. I wouldn't consider them substantive, but, substantive, but I will highlight them as we go through and they are in yellow. Um, all of the changes from yesterday's committee to today are in yellow. So uh, first, the first instance of amendment on page one is not a change other than in structure. So 
yesterday's draft said uh, strike section 2B in its entirety, but for proper formatting purposes, I needed to include it. I needed to include the language of that section. So uh, that's there, and we didn't make any changes to it other than to strike uh, subsection B. Uh, the second instance of amendment is the same. This is the report on increasing housing density. And so the, the first change is in the third instance of amendment. Uh, we are striking out the underlying section four, which is a report related to section 2B. And we're inserting this language based on yesterday's uh, testimony from VNRC, the recommendation that decisions to be a designated uh, downtown or neighborhood development Currently under law, those uh, designation decisions are not appealable, but this language adds uh, the ability to appeal that designation to the Natural Resources Board. So uh, language is amended in Title 24, Chapter 76A, that's the designation chapter. So uh, this committee hasn't seen this language, although it was in H926. So a person aggrieved by a designation decision of the state board under 2793, which is the downtown development district, or 2793E, which is the neighborhood de development area, uh, may be appealed to the Natural Resources Board within 30 days of the decision. The Natural Resources Board shall conduct a de novo hearing on the decision under appeal and shall proceed in accordance with the contested case requirements of the Vermont Administrative Procedures Act. The Natural Resources Board shall issue a final decision within 90 days of the filing of the appeal. And the provisions of uh, 6024 regarding assistance to the Natural Resources Board from other departments and agencies of the state shall apply to appeals under this section. In addition, uh, related language is added in uh, section 6089, which is part of Act 250, again, giving the Natural Resources Board the authority to hear appeals. So a determination by the Downtown Development Board designated, designating a downtown development district or a neighborhood development area pursuant to Chapter 76A is appealable to the Natural Resources Board. An appeal under this subsection may be brought by any person aggrieved by the determination of the Downtown Development Board. A notice of appeal must be filed within 30 days and the board shall conduct all appeals under this section as a contested case pursuant to the Vermont Administrative Procedures Act and procedural rules adopted by the Natural Resources Board. Okay. Any committee questions on that? No, just Ellen's done great work with us. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. All right, um, the fourth instance of amendment has not changed. Uh, this is uh, switching the automatic extinguishment of permits in downtown designated areas and neighborhood development areas to going through a process established in 6090C, which is this language in the fifth instance of amendment. There's a slight change to this language in the fifth instance. Um, so this provides that um, permits, there can be a release from jurisdiction for permits, um, either based on um, broadly things that are no longer considered development, as well as for areas, uh, for projects within the downtowns and neighborhood development areas. So there's one change based on yesterday's testimony um, from Mr. Weiss, uh, it's on page eight. Uh, in addition to those required to be notified under 6084, the district notice at the same time to all other parties to the permits and all current adjacent landowners. Thank you. Uh, the sixth instance of amendment has not changed and the seventh instance of amendment hasn't changed also. This is the wastewater permit connection language. So this is the same from yesterday. And then the eighth instance of amendment is where uh, the rest of the Act 250 amendments are. So first is the Criterion 1D amendments. There has not been a change since yesterday. Uh, the recreational trails language is next. 
Uh, again, there has not been a change since yesterday. However, there is a small change related to trails in the forest block section. So in the forest block section, based on yesterday's testimony, we removed the, um, the second definition of recreational trail. You may recall that subdivision 44 provided a definition for recreational trail as it was used in relation to fragmentation. That was the, the definition that uh, included the sort of uh, distinction between paved and unpaved trails. So that uh, separate definition has been removed. Um, the next change is not until, oh, um, into the road rule, section 35, there's a small addition again based on yesterday's testimony. So the road rule, the 2000 foot, uh, 2000 feet length of road, um, we are exempting road construction in a designated downtown or neighborhood development area from the road rule. Um, and then the next change is in the language regarding the wood products um, manufacturer uh, conditions. So we had a conversation yesterday about um, the language here on page 25. So we're talking about permit conditions for wood products manufacturers. Um, we changed uh, I think it was just one word. I think we just changed um, minimize to mitigate, but I'll read it to you. If an adverse impact under criterion one, five, or eight of this section would result, a permit with conditions shall allow the manufacturer to operate while mitigating these conditions. A permit with conditions that mitigate these impacts shall allow for deliveries of wood products from forestry operations to the manufacturer outside of permitted hours of operation, including nights, weekends, and holidays for the number of days demonstrated by the manufacturer as necessary to enable business operations not to exceed 90 days per year. Uh, I think the, uh, my editorial comment would be that if you look at the unhighlighted text, it can say imposed to mitigate impact by using the what's in yellow, we're introducing another term. It's like, well, do, do we mean something different? So now it's mitigate steadily all the way through to avoid any potential conflict or, or uh, just to stick with one word and be uh, more clear. Right, previously on line 10, it had said minimize um, impacts. So now it says mitigate to match the above. Okay, and oh, and then finally, there is a change under the, a small non-substantive change under the, the bill back authority language. Um, so yesterday we discussed, oh, I'm sorry, there are two small changes. So um, yesterday we discussed the ability for the Department of Fish and Wildlife to bill back costs associated with major permits. So on the top of page 27, first, um, I inserted the words, so uh, the department shall have the authority to bill applicants for the costs of participating in any major permit application and testimony before a district commission related to impacts on natural resources under section 6086A of this title, including wildlife, necessary wildlife habitat or connecting habitat. So instead of adding further clarification, uh, terms under the, the including, I added um, first a general heading of natural resources under the criteria. And that was based on the testimony from yesterday. Sorry, I was, uh, Commissioner Porter, while we're passing yes, by thank, that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I just would like to make sure that this is inclusive and will cover testimony in preparation for 
uh, those cases that are appealed to the Natural Resources Board or above as well. And I think it will, but I just wanted to make sure that that was the committee's intent. Uh, I would say it's the committee's intent and if the language needs any adjustment to clarify that. Well, do you mean, to... I'm sorry, do you mean to the, to the environmental court so this covers testimony and, and, and cases before the district commissions, right. but when cases go before the NRB or even to the environmental court, I just wondered if that is covered. Thank you. So I don't think uh, in committee yesterday, I don't believe we had a discussion on that uh, potential on that question. So as it reads now, uh, Ms. Tchaikovsky, it only applies to recovering costs related to permits going to the district commission, not in, not further on into like an appeals process, for instance. Uh, correct. Yeah, it says on line 20, participating in a major permit application before a district commission. Okay. So I guess I have a question to uh, Commissioner Porter. You have a similar build back provision now related to your participation around uh, CPGs at the PUC, correct? Per correct, and uh, but that's a somewhat different process as that's consolidated under the PUC. There, there isn't a district court commission. Right, that, right. You know, it's now. Sure, and I guess my question is, do you end up are you able to, no matter where it is in the process, if there's an appeal to on a CPG and you're called in yet again, are you able to build back costs related to any appeal process? You, I, I'm sorry to tell you, I don't know the answer to that. I will find out, but I would say that that the I think the NRB is more analogous to the PUC in this in this quest in this case uh, than than the uh, than the district commissions are to, to it. Okay, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, so uh, given that the bill is going to go to the House um, and we're adding, uh, would you feel comfortable following up on that question? And uh, if there's a need to, for additional interpretation to bring that forward then or-, or Certainly. Any, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, in addition, farther down that section, uh, this language uh, changed slightly from yesterday. So district commission's decisions, district commission decisions regarding the reasonableness of fees may be appealed by the department or the applicant to the natural resources board according in accordance with rules adopted by the board. So that language is added based on yesterday's testimony. And then I added the language immediately below it, um, further um, giving it the power to the Natural Resources Board. Um, so in section 6027, the Natural Resources Board may hear appeals of fee refund requests under section 6083A and of allocation of costs under 6094. Obviously, what's good for the goose is good for the gander uh, adjustment. Okay, so onward, thank you. And then the effective dates. And um, the effective dates are July 1, 2020, uh, except for the new criterion eight, which will be September 15th of 2021. Okay, great. Thank you for that tour. Any committee questions about any of the adjustments we made from yesterday till today or anything else? No. Okay. Um, with that, then um, I would ask the uh, clerk to call the roll. And the question would be, what is the committee's position on supporting the amendment from the named senators to uh, S our amendment to S-237? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendment uh, 
that has been put forward by Senators Bray, McDonald, and Campion. Okay. Um, any dis further discussion before we vote? Okay, with that, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Senator McDonald. Yes. Senator Rogers, Senator Parent, Senator Campion, yes. Senator Bray. Yes. Okay, three, zero, two. Okay. Um, and I'd be happy to report the amendment or the committee's position on the amendment. Okay. Um, with that, uh, thank you everyone. I know that this has been uh, a, a demanding way of working. Uh, end of session always is. And then we've layered on top of that, having to do things remotely. But- um, Mr. Chair, when are we due in uh, economic development to report this? As soon as we adjourn. Okay. So, do we have a uh, an invite? We do. I'll make sure. You... I'm sorry. I need to interrupt. Senator yep. um, Rogers would like me to call him. I uh, I don't think he can't call him. But if he looks on the Zoom invite that I sent him, he can call that number. But I'm not sure how long that. I believe take. rules has determined. Correct me if I'm wrong. That you have to be visually present. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So unless he's going to be visually present, um, I've emailed him twice this morning to make sure he knew. And I checked with the Senate Secretary and forwarded the Senate Secretary to reply to him. Our rules require uh, audio and video link in order to cast the vote remotely. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. So uh, thank you, committee. So uh, Senator Campy and I are going to be going, uh, we are going to adjourn. We're going to economic development to discuss the- uh, this. Senator McDonald, you're welcome to join us. Yes. This is not a, uh, this could be a party of three. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> 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 All right. Good. Well okay. deserved. So it's in good yeah. hands. How do you know we're not going to? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to everyone. Thanks, everybody. Uh, bye bye. And uh, we are adjourned for the day. Thank you.